Austin, Texas. It's the Q covering OpenStack Summit 2016. Brought to you by the OpenStack Foundation and headline sponsors Red Hat and Cisco. Now here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and John Walls. And welcome back to Austin, Texas, here at the OpenStack Summit 2016 here on theCUBE, along with Stu Miniman, I'm John Walls. And you know, if you make something, uh, the best way to find out whether it works is really to go to the people who are using it, because they'll tell you, believe me, very quickly whether it's working for them or whether some changes are in store. And that's what the user survey that OpenStack uh, publishes every year, actually twice a year, is all about. And with me to talk about that is Heidi Jo Trethaway, who is uh, with the OpenStack Foundation. And Heidi Jo, thank you for being with us, or Heidi Joy. Yeah. And you said, I love the way, by the way, I said, your last name said Trethaway like it takes your breath away. So it's, uh, <laughs> You're very kind. It's very good. Uh, well, this is the survey. Yes. 60 some odd pages, semi-annual. And before we get into kind of the nuts and bolts of it, tell us about, about who answered, uh, how, the breadth and the depth of the, of the pool of respondents that you had here. Yeah. Well, you know, when we, when we put together the cover, it totally made sense for us to have just as many users as possible on here. This is the largest survey we've ever done. It's 25% larger, just even than last survey. 1,600 plus people answered, representing more than 1,100 companies. So that's really exciting to have that kind of breadth. Um, we're not seeing it being overly weighted toward um, one particular size of company. We actually saw really good distribution of the size of company, Every, everything from small startups, one to nine people, to companies that say they're over uh, 100,000. So um, really, really good uh, cross-section of the community. Yeah, I think the one uh, tidbit that on, related to that point was, I think it was 43% uh, of respondents here are 1,000 or fewer employees, or something along those lines. Does that sound about right? That sounds about right, yeah. yeah which I was surprised, again, it tells you about small, medium, large, what you're getting here. Um, in terms of deployments now, what do you, what'd you find out here about uh, how many are in production and, and whether that's up, down, how does that stand? Yeah, well, that, I mean, you know, that's our favorite headline here. Yeah, of all the things that we learned in the user survey, 54 odd questions, um, our favorite thing that we found was that um, deployment, 65% of OpenStack deployments are currently in production or full operational use. And that is up 33% over just a year ago. So when we were back in Vancouver uh, about a year ago at the summit, we were saying rah rah, we're at 49% of deployments in production and now we're almost to two thirds. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's thrilling. Hi Joy, I'm wondering if you could help us understand when you're talking to users, what does production mean to them? Because we, we say, kind of said it's the way questions are worded sometimes, the way you build the tool, uh, you kind of get a reaction back. So what feedback do you get as to what that means? So, so we actually added to the definition of production in this round because we wanted to be really clear that production means full operational use. Your cloud is fully operational. And then the other two categories that we gave people were either QA or testing stage um, as a kind of a secondary uh, next step. And then another step down from that is proof of concept. So we let the, the 400 odd people who answered our survey with regard to specific deployments actually indicate for themselves at what stage their cloud is at. Hmm. Okay. And, and then in, in terms of um, uh, one of the sections I found interesting, emerging technologies. I mean that tells you a lot about what's on people's minds, right? Yeah. What's maybe not keeping them up at night, but what's keeping them excited, or what's uh -huh. optimistic. And containers, it's all about containers right now because that was far and away uh, the number one emerging technology. I mean, yeah. what, what does that tell you about what's going on in the community right now? Well, 70% of the users in the user survey said that containers as an emerging technology were interesting to them, and that outpaced um, software-defined networking and network function virtualization and bare metal as well as the other two kind of top three uh, interesting emerging uh, uh, technologies. So, so what that tells us is really the future of OpenStack. When we see people indicating, 44% of people indicated that they were interested in using Magnum as, um, a, as a future project, right now very, very few um, clouds are running Magnum in production. But when we see 44% of the community indicate that they are interested in Magnum, you can expect some major growth out of 
Magnum and then also out of um, some of our other services that have well over 30% interest. Yeah, I, I mean, Heidi Joy, when I looked at it, the, the things that's real telling when you kind of dig into it is first of all, the core pieces, you know, Nova and, and Cinder and Swift have been there for a while, but Neutron finally getting up there seems stable, seems like it's getting used, but yeah. as you said, right, expanding out, using more pieces, so, uh, you, you know, definitely the maturity of OpenStack seems to come through a lot in, in, in the survey. And I hope you saw the part um, about, we, we have almost 50 clouds that are running 15 or more different projects. So, I mean, there's six core projects. So once you start running 15 projects, you're going way down the line on some really experimental, interesting, emerging technologies. Yeah, it, it is. One of the things that you kind of find out, you listen, listen to the keynote this morning and looking there, just the classes of users that are in there. Uh, because not all users are created equal, you know. Sure, you're, you're a telco provider, yeah, I, I'm a user, but you know, there's only so many AT&T, Verizon, and Swisscoms of the world out there. Uh, there's the technology providers. It's great to see SAP stand up, uh, or you know, all the logos that are behind you, but they're the technology creators. What, what about the enterprise? How many uh, you know, of the users there would you consider just kind of you know, they're not the creators of technology, but they are just kind of the consumers of technology. Well, um, although I won't speak specifically to brands, because I don't want to get in trouble with <laughs> yeah, them, yeah. Um, I will say that, that some of the, the best known brands, the largest brands in the world, um, are using OpenStack. We learned uh, today in the keynote that more than 50% uh, of the Fortune 100 companies are running OpenStack. I mean, that is a phenomenal number. So you can't simply say, oh, this OpenStack thing, it's isolated in IT, or, or it's, it's the domain of telcos, or even just large companies, because as, as you pointed out, small companies are using OpenStack as well. Um, you're seeing it pervasive in all walks of life, whether you are going to Walmart to buy bread or whether you're driving your VW. Um, it, you're, you're going to see that, that throughout. Yeah, what do you see in terms of the breadth of response then? And what does that tell you about the industries uh, that are coming around and that are looking to be more aggressive in terms of their OpenStack deployments? And, I mean, can you break it down to that granularity here to say, okay, we're seeing, you know, maybe whether it's healthcare, whether it's uh, government, whether it's energy, whatever it might be. Yeah, in terms of significance testing on um, this survey versus the last survey, I didn't see major changes mm -hmm. in industry. Um, I, I think that the industry that's probably the most interesting for us to look at right now is telcos, and our, our most recent um, report on network functions virtualization goes deep into 10 different use cases, 10 different telcos, not just North American telcos, I mean all over the world, to dig into what they're doing with NFV. Um, but I, I couldn't break down for you specific industries or commercial industry, or consumer oriented industries with major growth because the significance of the numbers isn't there yet, which is not to say they're not growing, I just can't, I can't prove it sure. statistically yeah. yet. So sure. I, I'm wondering, was there anything that really kind of surprised you, know, you and the foundation when you came on? A lot of these, it's like, okay, 49 to 60 something percent is kind of the maturity we expect. You know, growing to you know, 15, it, it, it's good to see, but it, it's kind of that linear you know, kind, mm -hmm. kind of progression. Is there anything that kind of jumped at you, you know, market shifts greatly or uh, anything like that? Yeah, there was one in particular, because yeah. you're exactly right. While, while we saw that lovely up and to the right curve on the product, deployments in production, for example, the thing that was just absolutely a stunner, so much so that I actually had to go back to our last report and dig into the, the baseline numbers and the Excel charts to make sure we hadn't done it wrong in the first place, the big stunner for me was around business drivers. That 97% that of the people who took this survey, so 1,600 odd users, told us that one of their top five drivers for adopting OpenStack was standardizing on that platform. Mm -hmm. OpenStack has become the, the enterprise standard for infrastructure as a service, and that's a really big deal. And, and the way that I mean surprised is when 97% of your users say that's a business driver and only 60% of them said that just six months ago, and yet I see very homogenous answers between this survey and the last survey. That big of a shift means that something happened in the industry that people now believe that this is critical as um, un uniting around these, these standardized APIs. Okay, Th there's also, there's some new things that got added into the server this year. The, another one that jumped out at me is uh, the title of Cloud Architect yes. uh, was thrown in and seems a lot of people uh, you know, jump towards that bucket. What, what are some of the big deltas uh, this year? Um, well, the cloud architect uh, actually was, was informed to us by the last survey when a lot of people used the other box to fill in cloud architect 
We also asked about um, chief information officer or IT infrastructure mm -hmm. manager. And we saw we saw more users doing that. Um, I guess some of the other deltas, uh, I, I, I noted containers, and I, I think I'd also like to point to the maturity of some of our top projects. Our most mature projects, la uh, last cycle, six months ago, we were looking at about 78 to 85% adoption rate around most of the projects, mm -hmm. and, and now uh, the top five projects are at 90% adoption or greater. That's just really substantial uptake. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm curious, because one of the things that uh, surprises me, and it's not a red flag, but it's a little bit worrisome, is just, you know, OpenStack releases every six months. Yeah. And when I look at the spread of customers have, it's like, there's still a bunch in there running Havana, and of course Ice House, and you know, yeah. here we are at, uh, you know, the M's, and you know, every six months comes out, and yeah, there, there's this beautiful picture that you've got in there. Yeah, uh, that they'll, the they'll show. Um, so yeah, you know, what does that tell you people, you know, kind of deploy it, they don't keep up to date on it. Um, you know, anything that the foundation has commentary around that yes. uh, response? Um, yeah, that's a really good observation mm -hmm. that, that people are kind of spread out across mm -hmm. the releases, and we've seen that in every single release, so it is expected. Mm -hmm. But in the last release six months ago, what we saw is that um, it was concentrated around the three most recent releases at the time of the survey. Mm -hmm. This survey, what it's concentrated around is the two most recent releases. So we're actually seeing a compression and people moving faster towards greater adoption. Now, it's not really troublesome to see folks on the older releases because we know they're getting there. We're seeing a nice wave um, toward greater adoption, and we know that all, not all companies can manage an adoption every six months. Yeah. And so, it, it, as I said, it's, it's not quite a red flag, but you know, when we talk general trends, if I'm using a public cloud and you ask them, hey, what version are you running on some big company's public cloud? Um, I'm running whatever version they have me on, and it's a new version. So um, either you know, IT needs to get in gear and move there, but um, you know, we're usually a lot more secure if I'm running the latest version. I'm going to take advantage of features, but uh, you know, six months is always an aggressive pace uh, for something that somebody's going to take and uh, and deploy. Yeah, you said red flag, and I really would call it a green flag okay. because we're seeing that increased adoption that people are adopting faster than they were before. Okay. So we talked about the six-month yeah. cycle. Yes. Right? Uh, you're on your own six-month cycle, right, with the user survey. Yes. So how is what you have learned here driving that next cycle? I mean, how do you start forming areas of interest, questions, uh, try to broaden that user response mm -hmm. group, all those things. I mean, I yeah. assume those plans are full speed right now. <laughs> yes, actually on Thursday we're going to um, have a work group where we're inviting people to come in and comment, and, and anybody can do it. And also anybody can join the, the user survey common analysis team. We only require a confidentiality agreement to ensure that if something specifically identifies a user that they would be able to prevent that. So, um, uh, or that they, they, would, they would not share it if, if it specifically um, inter, uh, identified a user. So that said, what are we going to do in the next cycle? Well, the next cycle might be six months from now or it might be 12 months from now. We have done a user survey um, seven times in a row since April 2013. And what, and what we know is um, we have uh, data between the last survey and this one of 2,500 users, and that is strongly representative of the community. We're also seeing consistency across the data points. So we're thinking that it might be more appropriate to survey every 12 months, mm -hmm. less onerous on the users, less onerous on us. It definitely, this thing eats my brain about two months every <laughs> cycle, right? Yeah. And, and if we did it every 12 months, maybe we would see larger deltas in the data, um, and, and that would be entirely appropriate. Also, hopefully, have greater responses. Right. So, Heidi Joy, you've actually worked for the last two surveys, uh, and you've added some with the kind of the publication. Can you explain to our audience kind of you know how you're hoping to permeate it out there, not just electronically, but in other forms? Yeah, um, I, I think it's really important to be able to share things in as many formats as possible. So, for example, this user survey you could, is something you could just buy it on Amazon. We sell it at cost with no royalty toward the foundation. But, I mean, you could, you could sign up and get it on your doorstep in a couple of days. Um, my, my background in publishing enables me to understand how some of the print-on-demand publishers work and how the, um, like the Amazon marketplace works. So that enables um, us to actually have it out. And the cost is, is about $8 per piece. Contrast that to me taking it down the street to, to FedEx Kinko's last cycle when it was about $37 to print one copy of the user survey. And look how much 
nicer it looks. <laughs> um, so, so I really enjoy bringing some of my publishing skills, not only to this, but to the Enterprise Path to Cloud um, workbook. We not only published that as a print-on-demand piece that's also available on Amazon, but we did it um, in uh, uh, ebook format and in Mobi format. So you can read it on your Kindle, you can read it on your phone, on your tablet, or on your computer. Um, really making it a flexible way to consume new content. Well, it is certainly chock full of information. The OpenStack user survey uh, coming to a doorstep near you. <laughs> um, Heidi Joy, thank you for being with us. It's a first pleasure. time. Cube visitor, by the way, I must point out, and I hope not the last time. It's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you, it's my pleasure. You bet. Thank you. And we'll be back with more from Austin right after this. It's always fun to come back to the